Robo is going to talk about how it goes, how you can use it in an actual production environment. So I think I'll hand it off to him now. Thank you. Thanks, Jamie. Okay, so as Jamie just alluded to here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this Docker run command here, and I'm going to convert that to a ECS task in AWS. And we're going to run this on our ECS cluster over multiple instances and show how that same daemon, Docker daemon API works and gathers information from our ECS cluster. Right now we have an ECS cluster out there in AWS. It has two container instances um, and it's running a couple services. It's actually running three tasks, but it's running a remote Docker extension, which is that same thing that uh, Jamie showed just uh, running as a task. It's running as a daemon which means that every time we launch a new instance in our cluster, if our cluster expands up or expands down, it's always going to run one of our remote Docker extensions on each one of those instances. And it's going to pick up each of the Docker containers running on those instances. So what we have now is we have the two instances. We have the playground ECS AMD 6400 and 01. If you notice down here in our security for this, we have no inbound ports open. None. So what we're going to show you is what Davin talked about, this zero trust. And basically, there's no open ports. So you can't get to this any other way unless you had a VPN into your private subnet or something like that. There's no way to reach this. And we're going to show you how we do it from our desktop. The same with the second one here, <clears throat> the open rules. So just to confirm here that, you know, it's zero trust. All right, this is the remote Docker extension task. And what I've done is I've taken this, you'll see here there's a registration code, there's a volume to the Docker socket, there's a name. And what I've done is, is move those in here. It, so we have the device name is the way I'm doing it here. Arthur, instead of using the dash name, we also probably have a name up here. We have the name of the registration code. So these are our environment variables. So we have our registration code. And then we have our mount points, the volume for the Docker socket, just as you would have over here. So I've just converted this into this task. I've added this extra host.docker.internal on Linux. You don't, you know, on your Mac or Windows, you get this by default, but on Linux, you do not. So in order to match that, I've kind of added it in here as an extra host. And we know the IP address, internal networking IP address of this instance in this Docker network. So it'll map to that gateway. All right. So now we have these tasks running. If I look at my remote desktop here, I see I have the two ECS playground. And I see one of these has two services and one of these has four services. So we're going to look at the first one here. The two services here, these are manually added services. So this is to show that you can manually add services as well as the Docker container services that get added. So this actually gets to the metadata service on the host instance. So it goes from the container down to the host instance. And this actually does an SSH from our remote Docker container into the Docker host. So we can actually get into there as well. If we look at the next one here with the four services, we see we have our echo server task running. Um, this has two ports, port 80 and port 443. This was automatically picked up by our remote containers. Our, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this echo server task and you see that we are, we're gonna update the service and it says that we're running one task. So let's run three. That's actually more tasks than we have instances. So it's gonna double up a couple of these tasks this is just how you would have in production. Sometimes you have, you know, multiple of the same microservice running on this on the Docker instance. And I'm going to update that. And you're going to see that it's going to start launching these tasks. So if we look at the deployments here, you see that we have a, a red here with 33%. It looks like it's getting ready to come up as reach a steady state. And it's going to start launching a couple of these tasks. As it's launching these tasks, we should see in our device list, we should start seeing more. See, we had four before. Look, four. Now it's adding more over here. We have two there. So it's added two of those. So it looks like that it's updated already. And we can go in here now to our second one. And you can see we have the echo server. And it's kind of doubled up. 
it has 80 and 443, 80 and 443. But what you have is you see your container IDs underneath here. These are two different containers. So these are multiple containers running on the same Docker instance in your ECS cluster, and I can get to both of them. Okay, so if I just click on one of these on port 80 and I say start, it's going to take that, it's going to connect, and as soon as it connects, there we go, we're going to launch it. And there we go. It's an echo server. It tells me the host name is the instance name, really, in the ECS cluster. It gives me some information. And as you notice here, it comes from an X forwarded for 127.0.0.1. That's coming from my local machine. It thinks our port is on the local machine. And this is how, how we get to the, to the instances. There's a remote agent running on my local machine. There's the remote agent running in that container out in the instance. And it's making a connection, and it thinks it's just that port is local to me. And how do we know that? We look right here. This is our, our host name right here. So if we do a dig on that, what you'll see is it actually comes back as my local host. So all we're doing is creating a, a name for your local host to make it easier with you know a domain. And this helps with our SSL or TLS and all that. And then we give it a local port. So that port is actually local. Okay. Now, the other thing we can do is we have these other services that I did. I did the SSH to the Docker host. So let's go ahead and start that one. And I'm going to actually start it on both of them. And I'm just going to start it this way. You can also start it by this little button on the side there. Okay. And now they're both connected. So now, what I can do is since I have SSH access, I can actually go here and I can use that SSH that, to the ECS Playground host at Remote it at 33053. And let's see which one we are at 33052. So this one would be 33053. And you can see that we can actually run remote Docker hosts and show what's running on those instances from my local machine. So I'm actually running a Docker command, a PS to list it. So this is not my local one. If I do a Docker PS on my local one, you see there's a difference. I'm actually telling it the host is a connection out to that ECS cluster. I am running remotely commands that I, you would normally SSH into it and run this command on the instance. I'm running it from my local machine. And we can do it for both of those. So as we do that, you see that there's a different list on this instance. So I have one for each instance here. We've connected to, to through that, there's no open ports, through there to SSH and port 80, and we've raised up these number of echo servers. If we go back here and we update the service again, and we set that back down to two, and we say update, it's very dynamic. As Jamie showed, what should happen now is at some point when we go back to our devices, I like to look over here. This should go back down and kind of match each other now, hopefully. Or it might get rid of the two over here, the echo server, and leave both of them on here. We don't know. And this is the whole reason behind having this dynamic connection to the host. You never know where these containers are going to go on your ECS cluster. So right now I'm waiting for it to deploy. So it says it updated. We have 67%, three, three running, two desired. So we're still waiting for that to go down here. Let's refresh that let's see. And now we're running two and two desired. And you can see two of them went offline here. Those two ports, it's one container, same container, but two ports is now offline. And at some point those will get removed as well. Oh. No, they won't get removed because in Docker, if you run, for example, let's see if it's this one. Nope. Let's go back over here and run dash A. So what they have is, see this one exited 36 seconds ago. What happens is, is when you when it when it actually stops that container, it doesn't automatically kill it. It just stops it. And so these are going to stay in the stop state. So you can see that this container, there used to be a container running there, but it was removed from the cluster. 
but it's still stopped and on that instance. And I think they do this at AWS in order to roll back if something goes wrong. They haven't killed the whole instance. They could just restart that container and do a rollback on deploy. So anyway, that's exactly it. So it's doing exactly what it is. This is stopped. It's still there, but it's offline. So we know it's offline and it's not usable. You can't connect to it anymore, but we know it was there at one point. And so that there basically shows exactly how you would run this in a production environment. And it looks, you know, works really great for connecting to your, 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 and debugging your containers on your instances in ECS or any other Docker environment for that matter. And that's pretty much it for me.